Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here, looking to enhance my dietary variety with a little bit of spice of life in Stellaris. And so far for myself in the Petarian Empire, life has been the spice of life and that we've been primarily motivated to expand into this galaxy by our desire to eat other sentient species. I'm always on the lookout for a new taste sensation and I wanted to eat the Bacterium, but alas, we all know how that particular plan turned out and that I got outsmarted by a clam. I, I well, you know, I was gonna say I'm not ashamed to admit it, but I actually am ashamed to admit it. Still, I will admit it. I got outsmarted by clam men, which means that the Bacterium are off the menu for at least the next eight years because we've got a truce with them. It's it's unfortunate, but the, you know we can't eat any Bacterium until December of 2250. It's just the way it's gonna work. So we're looking to branch out our menu then. We also thought about eating these weird squishy fungus men a little bit too that we've also got in the Empire. But in the long term, it didn't seem like a great idea to eat the Tarathians simply because I, Perfidious Bean, am allergic to several varieties of mushroom, and it just it seems like a bad risk. Especially when my alternative to eating the Tarathians is just to, you know, go ahead and work them to death instead down in the mines. Why, why risk a potential allergic reaction and the need to inject myself with an EpiPen when instead I can just, just work them to death? So what does that leave us for options then on the menu? Well, the only other species we've encountered are these eruxians. Eruptions? Er, 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 eruptions? It sounds a little bit like, uh, yeah, you know, erection to me. It, or it could be like Etruscans, I guess, eruptions. That sort of works. But still, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to start a war with the eruption empire to eat them. I'm just not. Because, I, I mean, they're arthropods. Arthropoids, arthropods. What, in fact, I don't want to eat bugs. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to eat bugs. And I know somebody's like, like, oh, Pete, there's nothing wrong with eating bugs. Lots of people eat bugs. You're just giving in and letting an outdated social stigma dictate your behavior. And you know what? No, that's actually, it's not true. There's a reason that humans don't apply a whole lot of stigma to food. Or rather, we only apply stigma to certain types of food. And specifically, the types of food we stigmatize are foods that taste bad. That's it. That's really all humans care about. By and large, we don't eat bugs because they're gross. The only humans who are spending a lot of time eating bugs are humans whose only other choice is starve. Because bugs taste like shit. They're, they're really gross. If cockroaches taste like pumpkin pie, you can damn well be sure that humans would be eating cockroaches. We'd be tossing them into a bowl, putting them in the microwave, and nuking them on high for 15 seconds, and then crunching those little delicious exoskeletons of theirs faster than you can say Orville Red and Roacher. That's exactly how we would treat cockroaches if they tasted good. Problem is, they, they don't taste good. They don't taste good at all. They're real gross, real gross. Bugs are, are nasty. And I'm, I'm speaking here as a person who has, who has eaten bugs. I've had several different kinds of varieties of bugs. I've had crickets, I've had grasshoppers, I've had ants, I've had termites. Some of them covered in other substances, and when I say some of them, I mean almost exclusively have they been covered in other substance. They've been like uh, kind of a caramelized maple syrup sprinkled with sugar. Basically, it's like candied insects. I had some chocolate-covered ants, some chocolate-covered thermites, and you know what? No. There's, there's nothing you can do to spruce them up and make them just not be terrible. Every time, it'd be like, oh, look, you could have a chocolate-covered roach, Pete. And sure, yeah, you're right. I can eat a chocolate-covered roach. That's definitely a thing I can do. But you know what? I'm not going to do it because even covered in chocolate, it still tastes like shit. There's a reason that the Mars Corporation puts peanuts in M&Ms instead of termites. Because termites are nasty. They don't taste good. They taste like dirt. And would you rather dive into a delicious peanut in the middle of that crunchy candy center with the chocolate surrounding it? Or would you rather crunch into a bloated, hideous termite that's going to taste faintly of wood dust and dirt? Yeah, you'd rather have the peanut. Even just saying, okay, let, let, me, let me just run this past you really quickly. I'm aware we have a time project. We'll get to it. I'm aware we have inactive buildings. Those are going to be on Varnia that we don't give a shit about. Completed some repairs, surveyed a system. Uh, Earth finished its construction queue. Okay, that was a colony ship. It should be headed out. Colony ship is on its way out. Fantastic. 
And Earth finished construction queue on a surface. All right, just catching up on the messages. But uh, back to my original point here. Let me just run something past you real quick. Termite M&Ms. Yeah, you gagged a little when I said it, didn't you? Didn't you? You know what? You're right to gag because they're fucking gross. We don't eat bugs because they taste bad. I'm not declaring war on the Eruxans in the effort to eat their babies because I'm pretty sure their babies would taste faintly of dirt, possibly a little bit like sawdust, and mostly like shit. So St. Peter's is finishing construction. Pete, you're doing a lot of surface construction. Yeah, I am. I just want to make sure that every one of our planets has an available spot for us to grow potential future population. Growth is where we're focused. We got to get our population up, up, up. And in order to facilitate that, we're really overemphasizing food. Reproduction is one of the weaknesses of our race. We are, you know, repugnant and as such relatively slow breeders because of the unfuckableness of our particular peoples. It's our hurdle to overcome, but we will overcome it. We shall overcome our ugliness to rise up and dominate this galaxy the way that the Petarian people were always meant to control the fate of the universe. I love the fact that with a power plant here, we still only get two power out of this planet. This place is a dump. Pete, how come we're only getting two power out of this planet? Well, there's a reason for that. The reason we're only getting two power out of that is because it's just barely habitable for our people. But hey, free planet is free, and if we can get any power out of it at all, we might as well. But gosh, what's the habitability of this planet, by the way? I forgot. Let's take a look at that. Do we want to terraform it? Um, okay, so Bagash is actually considerably more habitable. It's a tropical world. We can get 80% production. I'm relatively comfortable with then focusing on really making an effort to make this planet work. We've already got everything queued up that we want to do. We're going to build... Uh, we've got these people slowly being worked to death, too. In fact, they're producing a good abundance of our food, possibly harvesting their own young. Man, would that be a brutal way. We are working these guys to death in forced labor camps, harvesting their own young. We're making them butcher their own young in order to feed us. That's just... I mean, that's just me. That's just me. This planet, however, we should be fully taking advantage of. And don't we have... I don't want another tropical world, but in Sirius, isn't there another planet that we could be taking advantage of but are not? Or is it Anthir? What do you got, Anthir? Get an 18 pop continental world. I'm tempted, but I kind of want to use our remaining available colonies to push our borders out a little bit. That's a barren world, which we cannot... Uh, I mean, that's Petersburg. What's Sirius 2 look like? It's also a barren world. Is there any other habitable world here? Barren world and a molten world. So no, this the rest of the system is a garbage dump and we are right to disdain it. Okay then. So Pete, where are you gonna expand? Well, one place, oh, we actually finally finished some research. This is fantastic, oh, quantum missiles though. Quantum missiles are real good. Space torpedoes sound amazing. Ignores 50% of armor and penetrates 100% of shield. These torpedoes are very large, slow-moving missiles. They're equipped with more powerful warheads and shield modulators. Oh, man, I want torpedoes real bad. What are swarm of missiles? Overwhelm enemies point defense systems. Okay. Also seems good. Um, Bigger ships, though. It, they're effectively a must for us at this point, are they not? We could unlock coil guns. We could switch to kinetics. We could abandon, or we could then have some mix so that we would have weapons that effective at all ranges. I kind of like the balanced ship design. Something that's good against everything, but the most important thing we can do right now, bigger ships. Holy crap, you are bad at this research. Sophia, you suck at your job. 84 months, we have got to get you some more physics research, which we are working on. We've got what? Chief? I mean, we're going to pick up four. That's a pretty significant increase just by itself. We've also got one working in Beetlejuice. So construction ships are on the job. And I think it emphasizes the importance for, of us for colonizing one of these planets. I think we're going to colonize Virdamon 3. We will not colonize Virdamon 2, however, because I want to terraform it. It's a dump. It's a savanna planet. Our people are going to be really unhappy there. But what I want to do is use it to expand our borders out. Now, in theory, we might be better off to leave Virdamon alone and colonize Nitrus. Because ultimately, if we expand out our borders here, we're going to get less. But as this colony expands and its influence grows, it has the 
you know what? Nitrous is better because it's got the potential to bring more systems under our Aegis. Pete, are you really going to say Aegis? Are you really implying that you're shielding? I don't know. Okay, maybe it's the poor choice of words, but zone of control, area of influence. I don't know how better to describe it. Bringing them into the house, yo. That's, that's sort of what I'm getting at. Speaking of which, quick time. Let's just do a little bit of colony review. You guys are good. Um, got a place to put a population. Okay. What are you all working on, though? Building anything? We could upgrade this to what? A physics lab. You know what? Yeah, do it. I don't mind the upgrade. We're going to get good vault or good utility out of that. We could also upgrade... You know what? Yeah, let's do... We've got a bunch of people working some suboptimal tiles here. What's a mining network do? Well, a mining network is basically like an energy grid. It enhances the productivity of all other mines on the planet. But since we only have two mines, that just seems like a bad idea. Wouldn't we better be better off to just build a mining facility? I don't want a mining network. I want just a mine. Wait, I can't build a regular mine? Why not? I want to build a mineral silo. Oh, never mind. I'm an idiot. Mineral silo is the one that increases. Maybe there is no mining one. Ah, screw it. I'm building mines. For some reason, I was convinced there's like an energy grid equivalent of mines. But now that I think about it, that may be a little like unbalancing from a game perspective. So you're good. Varnia, you're fine for now. Petersburg, you're good enough and actually already have some construction going. Well, you've got a pop growing. We probably need... Yeah, you've got, you've got plenty of room to expand. But gosh, you need another tile blocker cleared because this person is going to grow relatively quickly. I think we're going to wait and our next 100 minerals will go towards bumping another one. Of the, oh, wait, you already have a tile blocker clearing queued. Never mind. You're good. You're good for now. So planets are covered. Back to space exploration then. Our science ships... Okay, we're exploring Korganfu. This is important. We need this system surveyed. Pete, why is it important that you survey this system? Because I'm going to plunk a frontier outpost down there. Because while I'm not going to declare war on these arthropods with the express intent and purpose of eating them, I definitely don't want them coming my way. I don't want to be invaded by a swarm of locusts later. I'm not, I'm not having any of that shit. System survey complete. What's our science ship doing? Uh, we gave it probably stacked it up with a series of orders. Don't we have a timed project somebody should be working on? Uh, we got some debris. You know what? That's really far away, isn't it? Yeah, really far away, and we've got some time. And somebody will probably be going to, I'm assuming, do that research, but also survey that system. Ten of our armies are just sitting on Bagash, quelling unrest. We have nothing better to do with those armies, so just having them sit on a planet seems like an acceptable behavior. They are costing us some trivial amount of maintenance, but I think the trivial amount of maintenance is going to be ultimately better than disbanding and rebanding them. Rebanding? Is that even a word? Disband, reband? Is that what happens when you get the band back together? We're getting the band back together, bro! We're rebanding! Seems like the kind of thing that you'd hear Dave Navarro say one day about, uh... Colonization Wait, what was the... Uh... Why can I not remember the name of that band? You know, they sang Caught Stealing. Jane's Addiction! Thank you. Good God, Pete. What the hell's wrong with you? You're a stroke out there. The HIMSS Stevedore was able to build a research station in Beetlejuice. Resources have been refunded. Why? Did you not build a research station there because it was already built? Wait, no, because we're not getting the physics research that was there. Why are we not? I thought there was physics research. Oh, is it because we started building one and then colonized the planet? I bet it's because we colonized the planet. That's exactly what it is. Well, the colony is way, way, way more important than anything else. Reassembled slip shelter is down on the frontier being worked. So what are we going to do with all these minerals we've got sitting around? Well, we do have some stuff planned. Specifically, we want to start upgrading our planetary administration. Or rather, we want to start upgrading to planetary administration. So any place that doesn't have one, like here, is getting upgraded. These are really expensive, though. Those are our next priority. We've got an idle construction ship in Beetlejuice. Idle construction ship in Beetlejuice. Move your ass and build a frontier outpost down here. Quickly before their borders expand and a frontier outpost is no longer even possible. I also really feel like when our vassals are out here surveying, we should definitely get a chunk of that info though, right? 
they're out there doing the work, we should be like, hey, you know, you are subservient to me. I do sort of dictate your behavior to some extent. You are my vassal. Tell me what you know, Huggy Bear. You're the Huggy to my Starsky and or Hutch. You guys got to tell me what you know. Should be part of our deal. I think technically part of our deal is just that they give us income, like half of their shit. Okay, system service. This system has 10 minerals in it just fucking chilling. That's a lot of minerals. That's a lot of minerals. So why did you have to bounce through Pava? Because you had to go from wormhole generator to wormhole generator? Huh. So maybe wormhole travel isn't as quick as I thought, because I would have suspected that... I guess it's because there are no overlapping wormhole generators. If wormhole generators overlap, travel between the two should be basically instantaneous. But by separating these out a little bit, have we set up a situation? Well, no, we didn't. Think like where we set up a situation where we're going to be traveling in a series of hops instead. And technically we did that. But the series of hops is still going to be faster than either warp travel or hyperspace travel because we have to make like no stops. So we really, really, really want to try and push our wormholes out as far apart as possible. That's the way the world works. Acceptable. Hey, these guys also use wormhole travel? <gasps> The eruptions also are onto the goodness of the wormhole. They know. They're onto our game. Stevedore, why are you not building? Build a frontier outpost. Fortunately, influence is one of the few things that we are not currently lacking. We got quite a bit, mostly because we destroyed all of our other frontier outposts, except this one in Lasira, which once Beetlejuice is up and running as a colony, we will probably destroy. Because it's going to cover and get us basically everything that this Frontier Outpost is getting us. We would have no reason to want to maintain that. Planetarian fleet is out here. So maybe our next bit... Well, we want to continue building planetary administrations. That's that's the next thing. Keep building these. We need 14.5 minerals to upgrade. We'll wait another month. Every planet that isn't a toilet gets upgraded to planetary administration. So we can start upgrading buildings and whatnot. Again, infrastructure. It's not exciting, I admit it. Infrastructure is not thrilling. It's not being at war and dominating the Empire. But you know what? The reason we won our war against the Bacterum was because of our robust infrastructure. We ground them into the dirt by out-colonizing them, man, or just out-producing them. If it had been a straight-up fleet engagement, we would have got our asses kicked. They'd have pounded our fleet. We could have never replaced it, and we would have been annihilated. But we avoided that by just our ability to build stuff. Our ability, if you will. Three quarters in Engineering Bay. Eh, I mean, it's okay. Xeno Zoo. What does this do? As a sign of our mastery of the unknown, we have gathered alien creatures from all across the galaxy. Produces one society research, but more importantly, produces one unity. It also gives us happiness and attracts migration. We don't really care about migration because we only care about humans. We can lower the cost of resettlement and share the burden does what? Rotating tasks. Okay. It's an edict that gives us more slave out. Oh, I don't want to really pay almost one influence a month. Frequency tuning for energy siphon. Don't really care. Being able to clear mountain ranges. It's either that or Xeno Zoo. I do like the plus happiness. We have some planets where happiness is an issue. Specifically the ones we're not well adapted to because that... There's a question. Does the happiness of a planet... I know it's capped by the habitability, but do things that raise happiness allow us to go over the cap? Probably not, which means a Xeno Zoo is effectively useless for us. Let's go for the society research instead. Just seems like a better investment. The HMS Sagacious is doing nothing. Why are you doing nothing, Sagacious? You are Sagaciously out here doing... Oh, you finished your survey, right? Well, we can't survey that because it's in uh, enemy space and they have closed borders for us. Anything else we can do out here? No, no, and also no. 
Sanchez is out there surveying the debris in Chimanoff. I mean, we can go survey these planets because our vassals won't tell us what the hell's going on. I mean, I suppose we should also survey this. We, we technically haven't surveyed these planets either. Might as well get it taken care of while it's on the menu. And then we need... I really want to expand over here. There are habitable worlds. You know, what do these habitable worlds look like? There's a continental world. A tropical world, which is good. An alpine world, which is garbage. The other place we could potentially try and do is come up here. Put a wormhole generator in, like, Virdamon or Sigma Draconis. Actually, what we'd probably want to do is just move our wormhole generator. We just build one here and move this one. We would still have overlap. Yeah, ultimately, I think that's probably a better goal. Uh, Goibnu, what are you doing at the moment? Sitting around Moncadir fucking jerking off, not doing shit. You're wasting everyone's time. That's what you're doing. You're not doing anything useful. Well, congratulations, you're going to come out here and build a wormhole generator. Get out there and get to work. No loafing up here. Sanchez, why are you not doing anything? You're done? Did you get those debris? You did. All right, how did you do on the debris? 20% towards mining drone lasers, extra 15 points of physics research, 5 points of engineering research. We actually lost ships for that. Not that we were that concerned about it. I mean, we didn't want those ships anyway. And that leaves Sanchez also with nothing to do? The system is not surveyed, though. Survey the system when you're done, you lazy bum. This guy's really, you know what? You are kind of the new Sanchez. It's a good thing that Shang Tan is on the HIMSS Sanchez because he really seems to be channeling the spirit of his predecessor. I'm not going to lie. Okay, you are building. Good. No, we're good. I mean, we're basically just sitting back, waiting for some minerals to roll in, watching the empire expand. I think colony ship then is in order. Let's, uh, let's go colonize this crummy desert world. So we are going to drop a colony. It uh, doesn't really matter from where. I guess Earth is probably our best bet. So if you build a colony ship, you're not doing anything anyway. Where do we want to plunk it? Adjacency bonuses, adjacency bonuses. It's really all about adjacency bonuses. That's respectable. This, all things considered, is probably better. I would really rather have adjacency bonuses for energy, even though one of them does have a tile blocker that we can't clear. Uh, that makes it question. You know what? Here, this is a better spot. Nitrous Prime. No, no, this one gets an actual name. This is going to be Pete Cago. No, you know what? Pete Cago. This is a, Pete Cago can't be in the desert. It's a Midwestern location. It's more temperate. This is San Pitego. There we go. San Pitego I feel more comfortable with. Go get that taken care of. Colonize San Pitego for me. Earth's working on it. Those good, you know, good cats, those, those earthers back there. Those uh, good, good fellas. They know what they're doing. They know what they're about. They got a good head on their shoulders over there on Earth. Little bit of a weird proclivity to try and dine on other sentient species, but all things considered, you know what? Good, pretty good cats. Placid Leviathans. Do we want to go eat these space whales? We could treat them like giant tortoises, which I was just talking about humans' proclivities for eating other species. We uh, we pretty much ate all the giant tortoises. When uh, you know, that's not not actually a joke. We, we we ate almost all of them because apparently they were just that delicious. And see, that's the thing too. Somewhere it'd be like, ah, see, Pete, you were wrong about the whole food stigma thing. No, no, I wasn't. People don't typically eat turtles. They seem a little kind of weird. You'd be like, why would you eat a turtle? They don't really seem like they'd be that good. And then, and then you're like, oh, you mean there was a species of turtle that we basically ate all of? We, uh, we devoured almost all of them. Why did we do that? And the answer to the question of why we did that is because they were just that goddamn delicious. They were so good, people couldn't not eat them. We encountered the giant tortoise and we were like, one bite of this shit, and I was I, I I had to eat all of it forever for the rest of time. I decided that, that this was now the dish for me, and I must consume it. Also, you know what? Yeah, I think we will go kill these space whales. A new faction? Oh, I don't like the look of that at all. 
A new faction had recently been gaining traction in the internal political landscape of the Peterian Empire, led by His Imperial Majesty Juman Pete. They call themselves the Banner of Triumph. Members have been pushing hard for us to assert our military dominance over the rest of the galaxy. Well, what do they want? Oh, well, the Banner of Triumph is already super stoked. They definitely like everything we're getting. And they want the Peterian to have a high queen. Okay. Want our ruler to be of their species. Well, I mean, they're definitely... We're never going to have a non-human ruler. No immigration. Of course not. Core world exclusivity. Damn, Skippy. Asserting dominance. Declaring war against one or more Xeno empires will please the Peterian supremacy block for a time. Traditional domination. Adopting any traditions emphasizing domination will please the Peterian supremacy block. Well... Those guys are going to be pretty happy because I think domination is where we're going next. Star Lords are pretty good. Speaking of which, you know what? Let's take a moment and look at uh, look at our next traditions here. This is a good good time. We got a minute. The, not a lot going on in the Empire. We can turn this down. Just trying to speed down a little bit. Let that run while we sort of review. Colonial Viceroys. Governor skills increased by two. Empire leader capacity increased by two. What do we get for adopting it? War demand to subjugate other empires reduced by 25% plus 20% to accept when diplomatic subjugate. Okay, that's good. Zhang Tan became an archaeologist. What is Zhang Tan doing right now? Uh, are you on a survey ship of some variety, Tan? Oh, see this Tan! 50% anomaly research feed minus 25%. Uh, yeah, failure. Oh, that Tan! Tan is the new Shang. Woo! I mean, I, you know, Wu, I love you and your rocketry expertise and military theory expertise have been doing you fantastic work out there, by the way. Speaking of which, how old are you, Wu? You're 70. You know, with the plus 25 years, there's no reason you couldn't live to be 100. You have military and rocketry. Can we put you better to work doing research? Is this a rocketry? It's Voidcraft. If we need military or rocketry, maybe we'd be better off having you do it. I mean, Long Wo here has been with the Empire forever. He's 74. Guy's getting on in years. He's got to be starting to at least think about retirement. Perez and Bot, relative young bucks. They're up and coming in the scientific community, but uh, I, I think they've got bright futures. Um, Beardamon. What were you doing out here in Beardamon? Oh, right. Wormhole generator. So let's make that happen. Then. This system has been fully surveyed. Where is our science ship specifically? Right here? Well, you wanna you wanna just pop a wormhole station right there? There you go. I think we pop a wormhole station there, and then I, I think we we skip over this way. We're also gonna dismantle this Unamar wormhole station as soon as this other one is built. Gotta keep broadening our horizons. How come, Pete? Why are you always trying to broaden the horizons? Well, we're trying to broaden our horizons because we're always on the search for the next giant tortoise. What if we come across... Ugh, damn space whales. All right. Well, you know what? Then the space whales are going to be a bunch of jerks and just leave without even saying goodbye. Dicks. Um, We might as well just take you back to Earth and put you in orbit. This does save us, uh, you know, save us a bit of cash. Not a distraction. Go to orbit Earth. I really wish there was a button to just, like, enter orbit. I guess you just have to be inside the little planet sphere of... It's got a little ring around it. If you're inside that, you're cool. Man, the Peterian Empire is growing out nicely. Pleased with what's going on. Wait, what are these? Military power. What, what, what are you? Those are the, 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 the damn... The goddamn dirty space whales. Where are they going? Where are you going, space whales? You going to Alpha Centauri? Nope. You're going to Sirius. You gotta be going to Sirius. Stop. Stop your move. Stop your move and go here instead. Yeah, we're going to get to space whales. I'm going to enjoy some delicious space whale blubber. Research complete. What did we get? Hey, hey wormholes, 25%. An extra 50% wormhole range? That's freaking enormous. We may not need this wormhole station at all. Planet fortification. All right, that gives us shields. Uplink manipulation. Improved assist research. Not really that concerned. Cold fusion reactor. We're going to need those eventually. AI controlled colony ships, gravitic sensors, mining drone lasers. Those are crap and we don't want them. So I'm thinking planet fortification. 
It unlocks these new shield generators represent the next generation of energy screens, replacing older detector technology. Okay, so shields are better than deflectors. Done. Sold. You got me. You had me at better. You had me at better. You had me at better. Gallium has been surveyed. Uh, you know, you've got stuff queued up. Really just drive around and try and get us EXP. So, our wormholes got bigger? What does that look like? We still can't make it out of here, but we've got the whole of this empire under our... Oh, well, we don't even need to read... Okay. So, you know what? Construction ship in Virdamon, you may cancel that order. Mr. Uh, Mr. Riker, belay that order. Let's take one quick more pass through our planets here while we're figuring out what... I mean, I think we should just get the science ships and get our ass up here and start looking around. Alternatively... We could take a small delegation of not a distraction. And in fact, I like this plan better. Let's split you and then split you again. And then probably split you again. Give me down to four ships. Four is good. You guys merge back in. I want one exploration force. And we're going to, what do we need to call this? Uh, we're going to call this the boldly goes. Is they're boldly going to go where no men have gone before and in fact probably not come back we're definitely not going to assign boldly goes a leader and we're going to split and split and also split where's the one with two split oh i was hoping that name would propagate down all right well so much for that idea so you're going to go here you are going to go here you're going to go here and you are going to go here Meanwhile, not a distraction. Are you killing space whales yet? Of course not. Where are you? Why are you not killing space whales? You should be you should be killing the space whales. They're over here in Cirrus. Could you get over there so I can murder the space whales? There we go. Not a distraction? I need whale blubber. Go forth and get me some. Or did we agree to leave the space whales alone? Like, can we still fight the space whales? Uh, yes. Go destroy the space whales, please. I'm just tired of them distracting me. Every time I see the space whales, I think there's something upsetting or potentially dangerous. I'd really rather just murder them. Eteria completed its surface construction. We're stockpiling a lot of minerals here. We got a couple things we do need to do. Yeah, well, I mean, for certain values of engaged, our alpha strike should probably kill the space whales. Also, I'm not sure if the space whales are capable of fighting back. It seems like they're just about to get hit by a whole shitload of antimatter missiles and die. They got a lot of health, though. Yep. So the space whales can really take a beating. Don't seem to be fighting back at all, though. Just slowly standing there, letting the harpoons do the work. Call me Pete Mail. I was trying for a Moby Dick joke there. It didn't really work. They make a lovely sound when they explode, though. They have regenerative powers? The space whales have healing technology. We need that for ourselves. See, they make the most delightful, like, oozing noise when they actually die. Are you shitting me that our... Our admiral actually got EXP from exterminating whales? That seems like a dangerous precedent to set, is to give me EXP for exterminating whales. That's probably not cool. So let's have you go. You know, we could probably do this with one ship. Just have it bounce around. Do we really need four? Let's just queue up a path to, like, every star that's in our potential location. Is it outside? Oh, you're outside, but you're not. Yeah, let's just do... And then the rest of the strike force can come home when they're done. There's no need to put ships needlessly at risk. It's needless to needlessly put ships into harm's way. One more quick pass to the surface, and then I think we wrap this episode up. So how's things looking on Earth? So far, I mean, pretty good. Energy generation is top shelf. Uh, we've got a planetary administration generating unity. We have an auto Cathanon monument also generating unity. What we should... Well, we don't have a population to work this yet. I was going to say what we should probably do. And this is going to give us an idle building. It's also going to cost us energy. You know what? No, I'm not going to build it until there's a population to work it. That's just... That's pointless. Why take the hit? 
I, I just I don't see a reason. This one I will go ahead and build because this population will be done before this energy comes online. We already have an energy grid on this planet, so really all we want is just a power plant. And what are you upgrade? Um, I mean, sure, we should upgrade whatever we can upgrade. We're actually upgrading a mine. You have room for new population when that guy is done? You do. We don't need to build anything yet. Okay, so Petersburg is sorted. How about St. Peter's? St. Peter's so far? Looking like it could use some upgrades. We got slaves out here who are working blank tiles. Not a mineral silo, no. I would like a mining network. What about you out here, Jimmy the Slave? You're on a decent tile. That tile is actually decent. It's providing three resources without modification. I think we'll let those alone until we run out of tiles. Also, we're going to clear that. That keeps you in good stead for a while. Pittsburgh, what do we want to have y'all doing down Yeah, You're getting food. This is an empty tile. Do we have an autocathon and monument? We already do. So what do we want to do here then? Maybe we build a frontier clinic? Yeah, this will enhance our growth speed. You know what? I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Build a frontier clinic. And then also, let's remove this tile blocker and get ourselves some potential future research. How you guys doing over here? But gosh, you got room for more people? Room for more. And when I say people, I mean actual humans. I'm not counting you squishy fungus dudes. You don't count. You're not people. This guy's producing nothing. Why? Labor camps. Oh, you're in a labor camp, so you can't make energy? Well, that blows. Get off of that tile, then, and get over here, you jerk ass. We'll put an actual person there. And again, when I say actual person, you know, talking about not you. This guy is not producing anything either. But what do we... I mean, we should just kill this person. Like you, we should just eat. Can we set this population specific rights for this one? Because really, I would rather just eat this man. No, we'd have to change him for the whole species. Well, that's unfortunate. This guy is... We're, we're underutilizing him. He's doing nothing. In fact, he's just taken up space that could otherwise be devoted to a more useful member of society, i.e. a human. This guy ain't doing shit. Just sitting here, touching his little squiggly tentacles together by his beak. Why does a fungus man have a beak, by the way? It doesn't seem like fungus should have a beak. How long until you're dead? 2266, that's 22 years from now. I'm going to need you guys dead faster than that. I kind of feel like there's not enough space on this planet. This planet ain't big enough for the both of us. 2266, 2266. Hmm. You know, we may switch the policy rights on this planet to processing and, in fact, eventually turn these fungus men into food. Just to make way for their humans. Right now, they're still performing, some of them at least, are performing a useful service for us. Some of them, a useful service. In the meantime, we're going to clear this tile blocker just to make sure we got plenty of room for actual people. These fungus men have me troubled. Deeply deeply troubled. What I'm hoping to find up here is another habitable world and construction ship. Why are you doing nothing? We're going to have a colony on Nitrus shortly. Betelgeuse Prime already has one. Oh, well, here we go. This is what you should be doing, construction ship. You should be over here. How is this not in our border? Lies within the Petarian Empire. Oh, we're out of minerals. Well, go over there and get ready for when we get our next monthly income, and we're going to then have you begin harvesting the resources of our newly ensconced Enif. That's good, because it's got technology and physics research, both areas where we're kind of lagging a little bit. I'd love to get those numbers up. Somebody should build a research station down in Lee Zerman as well. I want to make sure that everything we can get out of this empire, we're going to be milking it for all it's worth, man. All it's worth. But we're going to keep milking this cow next episode. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to taste the delicious chocolatey milk that comes forth from our fungus man cows, you might consider subscribing as well. Post new episodes of Stall Iris every single day right now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.